Hey tarot friends, it's Dustin from Modern Metaphysicae, and today I thought we could hang out and take a trip through the Ritual Tarot by Tierra May. Uh, just so everybody knows that this deck and uh, the guidebook was sent to me for review from Tierra. Thank you so much for reaching out and connecting with me um, to send this so that we could all check it out. I've been working with this deck for a while now, and um, I've really been enjoying it. So. Uh, as always, if you're interested in picking up a copy of this deck, I'll include links down in the description box below. Um, also, Tira is currently doing a Kickstarter for the second edition of this deck, which is um, the Marked Edition, and we'll talk about that a little bit after we do the full flip through and we get into the, the walkthrough, so stay tuned if you want details on that. Um, I'm really excited about that one too. So yeah, this is a really beautiful deck. Um, there is a, a nice big guidebook, and the guidebook I really like because what Tira has done in the guidebook is she's listed opposing and reinforcing cards as opposed to like upright and reversals which I really 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 love you guys so when you're when you're going through the guidebook right you you get your usual um sort of like keywords at the top with uh sort of a divinatory meaning there are reversals included but like there's a little like keyword um opposing and reinforcing thing and I love this because if you're someone who's beginning to learn to read tarot in context, and what I mean by that is, is if you're looking at tarot um, in your readings and learning how the cards interact with one another and things like that, this is a really good resource. So I was really excited to see these included um, in the Major Arcana. The Minor Arcana pages um, are a, a little bit uh, less detailed, so you get like a, a, a suit page that has images of all the cards. And as you can see, it's in full color, which I love. And then you have um, each of the miners with um, keywords uh, that correspond to the miners. In terms of how the deck is constructed, um, the box is really lovely. Uh, it, this deck is printed in Italy by um, Ludo Cards, which is a really great printer. Um, I've actually looked into them in doing research for different projects and stuff like that. But it comes in a nice two-piece box that's held up really well. I've been <laughs> I've been using this quite a bit, um, and I do love a good sturdy box. Box, as you all know. On the inside, you'll find the cards, and there's a nice little piece um, on the inside of the box that talks about um, how the deck was made, and and it's a uh, handmade analog. Um, collage deck and it it took over two years to kind of create this deck which i i immensely respect um and i love like old school collage and this one is done in a really really nice way so the box is really nice the packaging is really nice the card stock is great um it is flexible but not overly flexible uh, are overly stiff. Um, it's got a nice lamination to it. As you can see, it's a slightly a little more glossy than you like your usual standard cardstock, but I like that because there are so many darks in this, like dark tones in this deck that it really helps that contrast to really pop. Um, the card size itself is uh, a little bit bigger than a standard tarot card. Let's grab. Um, a standard card here, as you can see. So it's a little wider and, and, well, quite a bit wider and a little bit taller. So that is something to be aware of in regards to that. Um, so yeah, let's do a quick little uh, flip through and then we will come back and we'll talk about what I love about this deck and we'll talk about the uh, current Kickstarter for the second edition. Um, and yeah, this is The Ritual Tarot by Tierra May.
So that is the Ritual Tarot. Um, it is an absolutely beautiful and gorgeous deck. Um, I have really enjoyed working with this. You can tell that there's a lot of deep, uh, beautiful, magical intention put into the creation of this deck and a lot of personal meaning. I really feel like this is a deck that, you know, Tira created for themselves and really just chose to share it with us, which I kind of really love. I love all of the art history references and the the use of the visual arts and um, antiques and um, sort of uh, artifacts from history that you see used throughout the deck. Um, I love the inclusion of both vintage sort of antique art historical pieces as well as like really modern art and it's done in such a really cohesive and uh, intentional f manner that it just it works so well i do know that one of the biggest criticisms of this deck when it first started making its rounds on on youtube here was the lack of titles i personally really kind of liked the lack of titles um when i first started working with the deck i will say it was very challenging and i referred to the guidebook a, a lot right and that i'm very thankful that the guidebook has images really good high quality color images because it makes it easy to match things up when i'd be like oh i it, uh, I don't know which one this is, right? Um, and so that was that was really useful uh, in that regard. But the more you use it, the more you get used to it, and and you start remembering things. Um, I found that this this deck is really great for like creative inspiration, and also for kind of really deep kind of shadow work. For me personally, I tend to use it for that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, I just really love the aesthetic of the, the deck and the collage is done in such a way that it's, it's, it doesn't feel like collage a lot of times. Like it feels like completed like works of art. Um, and so that for me, like when it comes to a collage deck, I really appreciate in terms of its structure, right? It's, it very much is RWS and Thoth kind of melded together, um, which is definitely the intention of the creator. And it works well for me. I, I read with both systems uh, quite frequently. And and so for me, it's not a stretch. But I do know for some people um, that was something of concern. But I will say this, that it tends, in my opinion, to lean a little more towards the RWS side of things. So if you're concerned about not really diving into the Thos side of things, you could easily pick this up and just read it strictly as RWS and it will work fine. Um, I also really like using the cards in terms of like ritual focuses and things like that because of the images that have been selected on a lot of these cards. There's a lot of deep esoteric messages in these cards. Um, I love, I love that Ace of Swords. It's just, it's so beautiful. But this is like, this is the thing that I love about this deck, right? Is you have these beautiful images that are, that are photographs, but they, they don't come across as photographs, I guess, is the best way for me to kind of express um, how I feel about it, right? Like, they very much are, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it, it, it's very cohesive in the sense that it, it really, it just really works. So, yeah, I, I have been really enjoying working with this deck. Now, um, Tira has done a Kickstarter for a second edition of this deck. And the second edition has different backs. And um, I'll try and put like a picture up on the screen for you guys now, which will showcase kind of how the deck is marked, kind of like a traditional like magician, like stage magician's deck, which there's gonna be like very subtle markings on the back of the deck that tells you what the title of the card is, which I think is a great way of including the title and making it not obvious on the back. Like personally, I don't really look at the backs a lot when I'm uh, laying, like reading tarot. I know a lot of old school tarot practitioners will lay the cards down face down, right? And then they'll they'll turn them over as they're progressing through the reading. I don't do that. And so for some, for me, the backs having a mark of what the card is doesn't bother me. Um, but it is something to be aware of. I thought it was a really clever way to keep the purity of the borderless image that we have in the 
in the collage work here without any text, right? Because text, I think a lot of people, especially like tarot creators, forget how powerful text is and how important it is in the composition of a deck. Like if you, if you really kind of look at the decks that are popular, they're decks that treat the text and the titles as a part of the art, right? And you can also tell when a lot of people complain about kind of the deck feeling um, like inconsistent or incoherent or um, maybe a little cheap, right? Is they'll, you can very much tell that they just like slapped a title in Photoshop on the, on the face of their card. And so I just really love the idea of putting the titles on the backs of the cards, which I just think is really, really clever. Um, so if you're, if you are interested in picking up a copy of this deck for yourself, I have included a link down in the description box below. There's also a link to the Kickstarter campaign, which as of the time of this video going up should have about a week left on it. Um, so be sure to go and support that. Um, I'm sure that there, I don't, I don't, well, I don't know for sure, actually, um, if there will be, uh, additional second edition decks available for purchase after that. Um, but you can always check, uh, Tierra's website, which I will also have a link in the description, uh, to, and down there also find links to my own personal website where you can book a reading with me or purchase some of my own handmade, uh, metaphysical goods. And you can also check out our community membership program, which is Scala Metaphysica. Um, all of that stuff is in the description box. So be sure to check all that out. I would love to hear what you guys think about this deck. I really personally think it's a beautiful deck. I've really enjoyed working with it. Um, personally, it's not a deck I've really read with for others with, and I've, I've really delved deep into working with this, um, on a personal level. And it's a deck that I went back to doing like one card pulls for when I was learning it, right. When I was kind of going through and, um, getting connected with the imagery and the choices of art and the symbols and things like that. Like there's some very specific art historical references and um, like even deities and gods selected on certain cards that, you know, I kind of had to process and work through and read the guidebook and try and understand it. And like, this is a great example of like the mixing of classical art with modern art, which I just... I really love and adore so very much. It's just, it's perfect. Um, so yeah, I, I, I can't say enough, uh, good things about this deck. It's quickly become, uh, one of my favorites. Um, the backs, the, like I said, the backs will be different on the second edition. Um, I do prefer the backs on the second edition. I will say that, um, these are not re reversible. I don't read reversals, so that's not something that I ever really worry about. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, I really have enjoyed working with this deck. It's gorgeous. Um, it does shuffle well. I have big hands, so I can, um, I can shuffle these decently well. So, and the cards have held up really well. Actually, I was a little worried with, um, the backs having so much black on them because I thought it would chip a lot, but they really haven't. Um, I will probably eventually like uh, edge this deck black when I get around to it. But yeah, it shuffles like a dream. I really love this cardstock. Um, I <laughs> I will say this, like my personal taste in cardstock is definitely shifting more towards this kind of uh, cardstock because it's just so much easier to work with. And for me, like as a reader, because there are, there are days where I will do five, six, seven, eight readings in a day, depending on what's on my schedule, um, having like flexible bendy cardstock like this is really comfortable, comfortable to shuffle and to work with. Um, if you do have smaller hands, I will say the size might be a little, a little bit difficult, but it's not, it's not unwieldy. Um, and you can easily, you know, shuffle it, uh, hand over hand because the, the height of it is not that much more than a standard tarot deck. So, um, it's a great deck. I will shuffle it a lot like this actually on the corners. So, that's another way you can kind of approach shuffling these larger decks. Um, but yeah, I really love this deck. Um, I would definitely encourage you to go pick up 
the second edition Kickstarter if you haven't. Um, I will say this, I do know that this deck leans towards the more expensive side of the indie decks, and I will say personally, in my opinion, it's 100% worth it. You know, uh, two years <laughs> to create a deck with uh, excellent print quality, um, it, it's worth it, in my opinion. I know for a lot of people, there was a great debate around that. I'm not gonna get on into that in the video too much, um, but for me personally, it's worth it. And at the end of the day, that is that is the only person you should be asking if it's worth it or not, is you. Um, and I, I personally feel like it is, so I will just say that. Uh, but yeah, I love this deck. Um, I did support the second edition, so I'm putting my money where, where my mouth is, even though this was sent to me for review. Um, I'll do a comparison once we get the second edition, the marked edition in our hands. And I have a feeling, I just I just have this inkling that I'm probably, that's gonna become like my favorite edition. But I've been loving working with this. They make w amazing altar cards, by the way, you guys. Um, and yeah, I would really encourage you all to go check it out. So let me know what you think about this deck in the comment section down below. Check out the description box uh, for all the goodies and the links and all that fun stuff. As always, you guys, I just wanna say thank you so much for coming to hang out with me and check out this tarot deck. I hope all of you are having an amazing day. And as always, remember, everyone is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. So be kind always. Bye everybody.